Dave just showed up with his nurse trailer. We're gonna be putting a mix mate on it and plumbing it up for him. Just picked up some steel for a rack to mount these totes. So lots of fittings, lots of stuff laying around. Here's the mix mate. These things are pretty cool. Rinse, then three chemicals. Goes down through a flow meter, so it turns one on. Meters the amount, turns the next one on, meters the amount. I mean, it shuts it off in between, but only you can only run one at a time is what I'm saying. Then on the other side, we're going to have a water flow meter. So water comes in here, and then your chemicals all get metered in there. There's a inductor that comes in the middle that goes by weight, load cells on right here. Rinse is right there to rinse the inductor. Oops. This thing's got a jug rinse in here. So you push the jug on there, proximity sensor starts sending rinse water and air out of here and then you can empty two and a half gallon jugs in I don't know, a couple seconds, two seconds, three seconds, something like that. Beautiful day out here for the beginning of March. Anyway, back to work. Yeah, I think that should work pretty good. I need some half inch by half inch holes in here for carriage bolts going down through like that. And I was gonna cut them on the plasma table, but unfortunately, just doesn't quite clear. So I could move the gantry up. I could put spacers under there and move it up a little bit and it would work, but I didn't feel like doing that. So I cut this guy out um, so he can clamp on here. It spaces my hole in the right amount. Then I can just use the plasma cutter manually and cut the square out. So I do a test right here and it's just a little bit too small. Just doesn't quite go through. So I'm gonna have to cut another one of these out that's a little bit bigger of a hole. And we'll try it again. And third try, let's see if this worked. Looks good to me. So it's pretty simple. You just measure where you want it and you can make a mark right in the corner. And this is the size the hole is gonna be. So you just line one of these edges up with the mark, clamp it down, cut it out. And another one over here. It's kind of incredible how precise you can get with this method really. This is the idea anyway, got a containment area for the tote so it can't slide around too much. And then bar is going to be across on top here, the strap hooks too, down to the outside. I have to do some fancy stuff here because this is in the way, I can't just put a post in the middle there. What else should I talk about? These angles. I realized after I made them all, they should be two inch tall by three inches wide. Because you can see here, I didn't realize how far in this is. So like, the angle just barely goes underneath that. Which like, if it's sitting here, it this is on top of the angle. But if we go to the other side, oh, it still is. Maybe it's not as bad as I thought. Either way, if I would do it again, I'd do two tall, three inches wide, and quarter inch thick for that. If you want an easy way to make your project look more professional, just put caps on the ends of your tubes. Just do a better job of welding and grinding than I do.
Get yourself some 36 grit flap discs, ceramic flap discs. So much nicer and quicker, smoother, just better than a hog wheel. Quieter, just really nice. I got mine from Benchmark Abrasives. Not sponsored, I don't care where you get them. But if you're doing this type of thing, go get them. This is the framework that's gonna go under the mix mate and the main pump. As with the theme of the rest of this build, I'm notching out angles to make them fit nice. Really, with that, it wouldn't even matter. I could have just left it um, above flush, but whatever. I started, so I'm going to continue. This thing is going to get square holes punched in it. The same method as over there. It's going to bolt down to here. <laughs> Sanity check number two, that looks a lot better. I mustn't have taken into account the thickness of the angle in my measurement or something, because it was two inches too far. Not a big deal, just cut it out and re-welded it back in. But that should line up nicely with those holes. And I'm gonna move those brackets to the inside for that. So that looks good. Um, yeah, come out of there, go into there, real nice. Now we just need to extend this over to mount the rinse pump. I'm not sure quite where these two need to go yet, so I'm gonna put this under all that, make sure it lines up, and then we can weld everything solid. So it looks good. I can weld everything up I have so far and get my distances or dimensions to put square holes in those to clamp it fast. And it looks like I'm gonna have to do something about that. Clamp it down and weld it or something because that's that sheet metal in the middle is too high. It's pushing my framework up. I meant to do this before I welded it together, then I wouldn't have had to drill this hole in the top. But whenever you're building stuff with tubes, it's a good idea to put holes in your tubing in such a way that any water or condensation or whatnot that gets trapped inside can get out. So like in these tubes, you can't see anymore because I put a plate on the end, but I drilled a hole in the bottom part of this tube so that any water that gets in here can drain out into here, and these tubes are open on the bottom so it can get out of the system. So this one, I should have drilled it before, then I wouldn't have this hole in the top, I'll weld that shut. But I have a hole inside here, you probably can't see it, but it goes through this tube and this tube. So any water that gets in this tube, once I have my cover plate in the end here, has a way to get out in here and then out that hole, so that your project is not rusting out from the inside. It'd be easier if I would remember to bring my actual cameras along, but let's see if I can set this up so you can watch me pull the whole rack off and turn it sideways so I can weld underneath there.
This fireball tool stuff, squares and spacers and things, make this pretty easy. Otherwise, you have to figure out this thing square, or you're tacking it and then bumping it square and tacking it again. I just have tabs on here that keep the square aligned with the tube, then I can just clamp this in the end so that sets position in all these directions so the only freedom of movement I have is this direction so I can stop this where I want it and then for the second one I can put these spacers in between bump this against here and that'll hold it where I need it I want this conglomeration here to be centered in the middle of the tube and my rack here is 54 inches wide so the center of this needs to be at 22 inches and the inside of this first bracket needs to be at 20 and 21 30 seconds so if I make a mark at 20 and 21 30 seconds, line my square up with that mark. that I said half of 54 is 22 and that is not true half of 54 is 27 right yeah because half of 50 is 25 plus 2 so so this is at the wrong place it needs to be that way So Dave was here Sunday and we talked about this a little bit. So we're gonna change up the design, move the Mixmate. Instead of having everything kind of clustered together here, we're gonna eliminate space for a pallet over there, which he's only gonna have three lines to start with. So there's gonna be all kinds of space for his stuff there for now. Rinse pump is gonna go here and we're gonna have a reverse flow thing, I'll show you that later the main pump is going to go right here and you'll kind of walk in between the mix mate will be here this will get cut off so kind of stand here to run the thing this is going to get a 90 so it's more out of the way um oh yes we're gonna have space along the edge here for the hose but i didn't leave any space in my design this lines up with the edge of the trailer. So I'm gonna cut out, made this little jig here. I'm gonna use the plasma and cut out space for a three inch hose and then weld another one of these back a little bit further. I don't have to cut that one out and move it back. That way I only have to cut three out. Um, and then there's room along the front here for the hose, which you'll have to take the hose out to change tanks, but that's not too big of a deal. And then we'll have the hose will probably run to right there, and then we'll have extra hose around the back that you can hook on if you have to go across a ditch or something. And that's what we're thinking for now, just to have to build it. Got my brackets all painted. Let's try and assemble this mess of stuff.
most of the hose is in. I need to pick some three inch hose up and a couple of fittings yet. The one thing we might change yet is there's currently, if the valve gets stuck open or this thing loses power and the valves are open, there's no easy way to shut off flow coming out. So the tank could still drain out through that theoretically. So we might put a valve in here somewhere. I'm not quite sure how that should be yet. Got a ram mount thing here for the tablet. It's gonna be about there. I'm not happy with how flimsy this feels when it's together. There's a lot of flax in the ball, but we'll try it and see how it works. Um, need to get that rack put on yet, but that's gonna be a job for Monday, I think. That's gonna be a bit of an undertaking. Um, what else? These things are bolted down. Got parts drying, valve mounts and whatnot. Three inch valve goes here. Two inch valve goes here. I cut it out a 3 16th, the mount for that, and it's not as sturdy as I would like it. I added a gusset, but it's still not sturdy as I would, as sturdy as I would like it. So I think I'm just gonna use it for time's sake, but if he wants another one, I can just cut one out a quarter inch. What else? This thing, I added this piece in the front that stiffened that up a bunch. Yeah, coming along pretty good. Hey, you can get right over there and plug that air hose back in. <laughs> well, Bankley's didn't have any of my back ordered fittings, but got a little bit of stuff to wrap up some of this here. Dad had to get the sprayer out, so he set the rack in the trailer, so I don't have video of that. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna finish putting nitrogen on the barley and wheat for today, and I will be back at this tomorrow. I decided to move the glad hands and trailer plug to here so that you can get to the back of them real nice and easy because where they are they're kind of in a box the tank is sitting on top so you can't take the boards off to get to the top fifth wheel plate is on the bottom and there's i-beams on the side so i don't know how to get in there to do anything so just gonna drill some holes move them over here and it will be golden So I messed up. Whenever I took these lines off, I forgot to mark which is red and which is blue. So now I have to figure out which is which. And they're almost impossible to trace back along the trailer. So I'm going to hook them up and pressurize the system with this thing. And we will see which one does useful things. Because this is a blue glad hand, it has this thing here that interferes with this. That's why I can't plug it in. So I'll just get rid of this real quick because this is just a testing glad hand. There we go. Let's see if that works. Oh, maybe I need this thing yet. That's better. I did not realize they were keyed like that. Why does it leak yet? If that wore out, or is it actually different? Let's try hammering this thing down a little bit. I went too far. It's tight now. 
got water coming out. Or do you have water air coming out somewhere? Oh, we've got air back here. That's cool. I got it right first try. I made these little brackets. I'm going to weld up along this rail to hold my air lines and things. So they used to go in that hole. So it was a short enough run, they wouldn't fall off. But now they have to go the whole way back to there. And they, yeah, you can see they don't want to stay up there. So one of these, I think every other slot and we'll zip tie it in. hose reel on Northern Tool for like 200 bucks. 50 foot garden hose reel. It's a uh, hot, cold, 5 8 rubber water hose. Seems pretty good for $200. We're going to try it out and see what it's like. I also found these Ely quick connectors that seem pretty nice. Um, a cheap, you know, the cheaper brass ones that have the three ball bearings in there. Are like 16 17 dollars a set these are 23 dollars a set but these seem like much better quality for that little bit more the cheaper ones ones like this you have to pull it back to push it together and they look like if you get dirt in them and stuff they get jammed up they're just not there it's hard to get out it's just they're a mess the one thing that I don't like about these is they're a lot bigger, so that could potentially be annoying. I guess we're going to find out. I don't know, Dave might not like all this stuff in the end of his face. We'll have to see. That is nice though. The only question is, are you going to snag it on stuff? No, oh, maybe not. I made some brackets over here to mount Unistrut on this mount. I think that's how we're going to run the hoses around, for lack of a better way to do it. So I'm going to weld these up, and I don't actually have any Unistrut, so I'll have to go get some. Right ram mount showed up for the tablet. These things actually fit over the ends. Um, the other one was too short. So let's get that put together and put on. Um, what did I get done since... Oh yes, these things. The hoses are going to come around here. A couple pieces of shallow strut. Oh yeah, hose reel is mounted. It looks like my mount is flimsy, which it's got a little more torsional flex in it than I'd like, but I don't know. The hose reel itself is kind of floppy too, so hopefully it's not a huge deal. These things are kind of neat. Paul B's, Zimmerman sells them. Um, tank fill, powder coated. Just hook it in the top of your sprayer tank and fill it easier than trying to hang a garden hose in there and it falls out and sprays all over the place. We have a battery up here. I was going to cheat and use a bungee cord, but that's not good enough. So, got a piece of angle iron right there. Um, going to make some bolts that go in these and clamp it down. I've done that before and it works pretty well. For charging, um, we have six gauge wire going over to the mix mate. This is the paper that came with the mix mate. There is precious little information on any of this stuff online or elsewhere but this came with the mix mate so for the fusion and flow systems which is, this is a fusion i'm guessing the flow is if you just have the stack um but for 
three feet. If you're going three feet from there to a battery, you only need eight gauge. 10 feet is six gauge, which I'm around 10 feet, I think, if I had to guess. Maybe a little over that, but I think we'll be good there. So six gauge wire running over to the battery here, and then we have 12 gauge going to the seven pin hooked into the ABS, which Peterbilt's spec for the ABS fuse is 30 amps. So I put, and it's switched with the key, so I put a 20 amp breaker there. So hopefully if we try and draw too much power with the mix mate when the battery's dead or something, or the battery can't supply it for some reason, and the truck is hooked up giving power to the mix mate, or giving power to the battery to charge it, it'll hopefully trip the breaker instead of blowing fuses or making things hot or whatnot. So that's the idea there. I don't know if that's the proper way to do it or not, but that's what we're trying. Um, we got hand wash right here, plumbed into the rinse system, and there's air right here for pressurizing the air tanks in the trailer, which then also goes over to the mix mate for the, I think, I don't know if it's just for the jug rinse or if you can also blow your lines out with air. You might be able to blow your lines out with air, which would be nice. This line I cut, I should have made it maybe a foot longer, but it just lays in here. Going to be a bungee cord there and one there to hold it in. And then there's going to be another one that wraps around the trailer back here, and I'm going to put some pegs around to hold it in. Other than that, I had to put the rest of these on and figure out the length of the third hose. So we're going to mount all those hoses to the strut. And my bracket is dry for the valve over there for rinse, so I can finish up plumbing for that. Got the tablet mount. purchased this from Praxidine. Praxidine was supposed to set up an intersect account, but that fell through the cracks and didn't happen. So I had to get a hold of them and give them the information for this mixmate and uh, mailing addresses and things, and they got an account set up. So then I could go in the tablet. If you go in the three lines over there and then in settings, then you can update controller firmware. You have to have the mixmate turned on, and then it'll connect to the mixmate Wi-Fi and update the firmware on the MixMate. You have to be an app version 243 to be able to do that, and you have to be signed in to interconnect up here, which is not gonna show that I am. Now, we have to completely power down the MixMate, power it back up again, then we're gonna go here into MixMate Updater, search for nearby MixMates, and wait. So that was the last step was to update to the latest version of legacy firmware. Now we're going to the beta firmware, which apparently is what you're supposed to be using. Okay, connect, connection successful, and we're updating. some pegs on here along the side to hold a hose in along the edge here this rinse hose Dave has done that in some of his other trailers and it's a lot nicer than trying to wrap it up in a little coil here so we're gonna try that probably one here two or three other ones down along the length make a loop in the front come back loop here well you'll see Well, that's a start. I need more pins, and I need a better way to secure it, because it can kind of... At the very least, I need more pins. So, I'll wait on that. Let's get this 
um, rinse hooked up. I want to put a cigarette lighter port here so that I can put a adapter in it and run a USB to the tablet, but I want to hook it in to this switch so when the switch is off, it's not powering the tablet. So I'm going to pull this cover off and see if I can hook in after the switch. So it's four bolts, two up here, I took this out already, and the top one's down here. Both sides, pop that off, and we'll see what we can find in there. Looks like here's our rinse coming in, and that comes up here. There's a valve right there. It turns that on and off. And that's the inductor rinse. And then our air supply comes in. It's this back one here. Comes up through, it looks like, to a valve and maybe a pressure regulator. And that comes up to the jug rinse. But then it also looks like it comes down here. Oh yeah, this this is water coming this way to a valve. And this goes to the jug rinse. So you have air on the back here and water in the front coming into the jug rinse. And it looks like that's the only thing they use the air for. I'm a little disappointed with that. I thought they might use the air to blow the lines out. Like when you're done filling the sprayer, I thought maybe they'd blow the lines out with air so you don't have heavy hoses to drag around, but I guess not. Anyway, what we want is down here. There's the positive stud right there, and it has a crimp on that looks like goes to two 16 gauge or so wires that go to the switch, and then go up and kind of disappear into the loom somewhere. So all I need to do is pull a wire off the top of that switch, and I have switched power that I can run my cigarette lighter with. So it should be pretty easy, I'll just grab a ring terminal and yank a thing off of there. Goodness, that was a struggle. I was a little optimistic with my bolt hole clearances, I think is what happened there. No, I know is what happened there. I need to make another U-bolt because this one is not long enough. I kind of estimated length and it's too short. Now we want water coming in from there. So that comes up here and we want to go this way to the rinse pump. Now we need this in this position going like that down to the rinse pump, coming out. We want to come this way into this hose, into there, and then into the tank. So that all should be hooked up. I'm gonna open this valve, which is a little sketchy. Yeah, hopefully all my plumbing works. Do we have any water actually? Didn't make any noises. Yep. So what happened is it was air locked and I had to let air out. It also has a 90 in there, I guess, so that when you're pumping, you can suck the tank drier. Um, but I had to let some air out to get the flow started and to let air out of the system so that water would fill that up. So now we're gonna have a little air in this part so hopefully the pump can get rid of that. So I put oil in this and gas, so we should be ready to start the pump and see what happens. Let's prime these pumps and see if we can get anything useful to happen. Okay, we're gonna call that good. We like to see. Cuz 
except now I could test this out and suck all that back into the tank, except I don't want to suck all that nasty green stuff back in. All right, do we have leaks over here? What am I seeing? That's not cool. So I reconfigured this, but this pump now has a quick connect on there. And going to the mix mate is also a quick connect. So you can use this pump just as a transfer pump if you want to. I don't know why I didn't think of that before. So this is hooked up now that I can pump that tank outside. So let's try that. And things are happening. It's about empty already. I'm gonna see if I can hook it up to the mix mate and tell it to pump 100 gallons of water in that tank and just go by the markings on the tank and see how close we are. Um, yeah, this could take me a minute to figure out. Okay, let's check this thing out. Oh, we got blue lights in there. Man, everything is lit up. Fancy light up cables. Cool, so that works. Now I just have to figure out software and get that thing to work. So you've got to go on Play Store, find MixMate app. It won't say beta behind it. And then you go down here to beta tester. I forget what it says quite, but it says join here. And you can join the beta testing thing. It takes like 10 minutes or something to let you join. And then that should look like this. Then you can update to the MixMate beta, and I don't know, we'll see what happens next. So now, when we go in the app, it looks different a little bit. So I have to log in to, I'm assuming this is Intersect, so let's try that. And that did not work. I talked to Prakstein, and they had to move our Intersect account over from the old version of Intersect to the new version of Intersect to work with the beta version of the app. So with that sorted, let's try and mix something. So I came back here, and I was running water through here, through there, and out to the tank. And I was reading uh, water flow on that flow meter, which I should have been um, coming through here, but that flow meter is not reading anything. So I think that flow meter is a problem that I need to work on. I don't know what to do about that. All right, update on this flow meter. I talked to Praxidine guys, and they said that according to records, while this was on the legacy system before it was shipped out, Daltmeyer tested it um, at their facility, I guess, tested batches with it, and they probably didn't realize that it was going to sit for two years. I'm sure they didn't realize it was going to sit for two years. And the thought is that it never got winterized and the flow meter froze um, is our best guess. So they had me take it apart, and these... So there's gears in here that, I mean, hence the gear flow meter part. There's gears in here that sense the flow of chemical. And there's shafts in here that have this little nubbin on that's supposed to go in these holes to support the other end of the shaft. And they were broke off when I took it apart. And there was one in each hole here. There's the, the other one. So I'm thinking that these kind of jammed up the gears I guess and prevented them from spinning and like it is I don't know it's a little bit tight which I would think water could overcome that but I don't know maybe not either way we need a new one apparently you can't get the shafts so you have to get a whole new flow meter so they're gonna ship us one and hopefully get that before the end of the week so I guess I'll just leave a flood there to dry up these things are a little hazardous, but I'm not sure how to do it differently. Um, anyway, we have 50 gallons in here. We're at about 50 gallons, so I'm going to pump, I don't know, 200 gallons in it based on the flow meter and 
see where we end up. Couldn't connect. What the deal? There we go. Cool. Alrighty, let's start this thing up. Okay, let's see if that does anything useful. Hit this switch and see if we lose connection this time. Just past 100 gallons, should surely be at 125. Uh, that'd be about right. So does it make sense? Okay, if it's three and a quarter inches in between my notches, 25 gallons is three and a quarter inches, does it make sense that seven gallons is 0.91 inches? In which case we're like a quarter inch off, which is probably all the more accurate I was down here. And I mean, probably all the more accurate the tank is to be fair. Kind of like these quick connects actually. And having a valve in the end of the hose is really nice. So we'll fill this thing to two and a half gallons. So I forgot to tear with the jug on, but if we tear scale now, should be two and a half gallons, 20.87. In the guide it says 20.85, so that's a little over, but I have the weight of the jug too. So let's dump this jug out. I'm gonna kill myself on that thing yet. Ooh, what's up with that? Okay, well let's tear it there. So you take what you got here, divided by what um, two and a half gallons is supposed to be, is 20.85, and then you get 0.95825. So we need to go out of here, and then I think we go in here, um, here, scale calibration. Now I don't, Oh, this is count per kilogram. What? The top number here, I don't have a hand to point. The top number here is how far we were off. So we had 0.95825 of um, 28.5 pounds. So we multiply that number by the current calibration. So it doesn't matter what unit this is in because we're multiplying this by the percentage that we actually had and that comes out to 28283.213. So let's put that in here, I guess. Yeah, because I have video of what it used to be. 29500. So now we're 28283. Yeah, 0.21. I think you're supposed to round to two decimal places. So we'll say done, save. Yeah, do, 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 out of here. Cancel. How, how do you save? Oh, like that. Okay. So I had to go back to man, the, the first tab, and then I could save. Probably have to do that, or it won't actually save your configuration. Then you'll be wondering why it didn't work. So, we're teared and good. I'll get another two and a half gallons of water, and we will check it. I zeroed it with the jug empty on top, so let's try it with the jug full, and that's real close. Gonna have to do something about this. I only just saw that. Oh, we might need a whole new thing there. We cut out some stainless steel labels for the reverse flow deal here, but I think it would look better if there was yellow paint behind the words, so let's try that. Oh, lost my cameraman there, but got some yellow behind. What do you think of that? Well, the flow meter showed up here finally, so let's stick it in and see if we can get it to do anything useful. All right, let's see if this thing does anything useful now. That's a good start. That's what we want to see. Oh, maybe I should turn the valves on back here. Yes. Yes. 
Oh yes. That's what we like to see. So we're about at 75 gallons there. And this says 70, which is about right because the tote was not quite empty when I started pumping. So that's about what I would expect. And there's 250 gallons and we're at 245, which is perfect. Yeah, can't get any closer than that with my calibration tools. Let's try doing a mix again. Uh, if I remember how to do this. 100 gallons, 10 gallons an acre, 80 gallons of water, 20 gallons of not water, connect. Oh, I'm not ready. We have things happening, hopefully good things happening. There it shot off. Just a little above 100 gallons. Dave's gonna be in shortly. Pick this thing up. I'm just getting kind of cleaned up a little bit. Uh, we're gonna, he's bringing a five gallon calibration jug along. We're gonna calibrate it and make sure it's all good to go. I'm just cleaning up down here, taking my stuff home, and in case you're wondering, this is most of what it takes to build a nurse trailer, I guess. I stopped at Dave's here on the way back from picking that truck up. They've been using the nurse trailer. I haven't talked to him yet, how it's been working really, but yeah. He hasn't said it doesn't work, so that's good.